Hi, this is Astro Diver number one, and today I'm going to do a review of the Celestron SLT 130. I have two of them, and I'm specifically going to be focused on the three year old telescope and some of the trials and tribulations and how well it's held up over the years. It's a little dark in here today, so I'm going to move these two scopes outside and we'll go from there. Okay, now that we have the two of the scopes out here, we can get a better look at them. Uh, just a quick story why I have two of these scopes. About three years ago, a friend of mine uh, received the shorter scope, the one in front, for her birthday, and uh, I borrowed it <laughs> because she doesn't use it very much. And uh, I've had it pretty much ever since. So I told her I was going to give it back, and a few weeks ago I went ahead and bought the uh, the Celestron in the back there. Same model scope. There's a few differences and I'm going to go over them here in a second. So one thing I did notice right away is that the controllers are slightly different. Uh, this here is the older controller and you can see the buttons. Uh, the same amount of buttons but they have different descriptors on them. All right. The new one, as you can see here, uh, different descriptors. Everything seems to work about the same, but if you look at the, the buttons on the side of the board, there's indentations right here. Uh, something that the other controller did not have. And another thing that I really like about the newer Celestron um, is the up and down arrows have a little barrier on the side. I don't know if you can see that. But at night, you're doing everything by feel, and if you accidentally hit enter or align or back, you kind of screw yourself up. These just give uh, your thumb a good reference to where you are on the control panel. So that's something I really like about the, the newer Celestron. So I'm just going to go through the pros and cons real quick. And I'm going to have to hold the camera by hand for this. Sorry about the shakiness. And we'll start with the cons. Well, number one, parts don't seem to be too easy to find. A couple of years ago, I had the telescope out at a star party and I broke that piece of plastic on the tripod. You think it'd be easy to find, but trust me, it's not. I suppose I could write Celestron and maybe find one, but when I give this telescope back to my friend, she's gonna be getting the new tripod, unfortunately for me. Um, another problem I've had are the laser pointers. I've gone through three of them. Uh, two on this telescope that function just fine and then just stopped working and if I did something like put a new battery in it it still wouldn't work but if I put that same battery into another pointer the battery worked fine so it wasn't the battery the pointer was just dying and as a matter of fact on this scope when I bought it a few weeks ago Right out of the box, a laser pointer didn't work. So Celestron was good and sent me another one. Another drawback to this particular scope, and it holds true for any less expensive tripod, um, is that it does tend to vibrate a lot. You know, you have to wait 10, 15 seconds, even if you're visually looking through the eyepiece for the vibrations to stop. Um, again, that's just a, a characteristic of a lightweight tripod. And finally, you're limited to a, a 30 to 40 second exposure if you're going to use the telescope for astrophotography just because um, it's an alt azimuth mount. So it basically goes up and over and up and over and over and down and over and down instead of a nice smooth arc like an equatorial. So even if the telescope is, is bang on, um, you're usually limited to about 40, 45 seconds, then you're going to start to see some uh, blurriness. So on to the pros of the telescope. Uh, it's cost. It can be found for under $500. As a matter of fact, I got this new one a few weeks ago for far less than $500. It does come with uh, two eyepieces and everything else you see there. Um, it's also very easy to use. The controller is pretty intuitive. I'm not very bright about these type of things, but it, it's not too difficult to figure out. And once you figure it out, it's a real breeze. 
Another thing is lightweight. It only weighs 17 pounds, so I can pick it right up easy, one hand. And so it's it's, it's very portable, easy to use. Um, you can take the optical tube assembly off, you can take the base mount off, and you can fold up the tripod and put it in a small car easily. Another thing I like is uh, they have very nice mirrors on them. Some of my telescopes are almost 40 years old, so maybe I'm... Um, and uncoated, unrecoded, so uh, maybe comparing apples to oranges there. But I really like the images for the mirror. It's a F5. It's a very fast mirror, but both mirrors seem to uh, show very, very good images. Also, with the Celestron SLT130, you can use an inch and a quarter eyepiece, or they give you a two inch eyepiece adapter, and you can go ahead and put one of these big old hand grenades in there. Um, a lot of telescopes in this class don't, in size, don't have that option. So that is a very nice option. Another thing is, it's been very dependable. I've spent many hours with this little scope here on the left at night. Um, I probably, I'm not exaggerating, I probably have 120 hours of running time on it. I go through a lot of batteries. I've gone through battery packs. Um, you can see the focuser here is is really starting to wear getting a lot of slop in it but what I can do and what I'm going to do before I return to my friend is these four screws here you can take that out and you can adjust it up and tighten things up in there. Another pro is there's there's a lot of support out there for these telescopes they're very common there's tons of YouTube videos Celestron has a very ni a few nice setup videos on how to set up the controllers and uh, it works most of the time. I, I can tell you though that if this bubble level here is not dead center, it's probably not going to track very well or align at all. And also, uh, they can be used for simple astrophotography. Like I said before, you're limited to 30 or 40 seconds, but uh, it is kind of neat if you don't know exactly where the ring nebula is or the crab nebula. You just you know, hit M1 and it'll go to the Crad Nebula. And uh, for visual observation, they're real hound dogs. I've had Jupiter in the scope for four hours straight. Um, with a camera and a little heavier, they, they tend to lose their tracking a little bit, probably because of the weight of the camera. Another thing I forgot to mention on my list is they're very easy to collimate. And they, they uh, tend to hold their collimation night after night. Some of my other reflector telescopes, I have to, to adjust it sometimes twice during the night. But these have really nice lockdown knobs and adjust knobs, and they really seem to do the job. And this one, I actually put the collimation device on. I have a laser collimator, and it was almost dead on from the factory, even after being shipped halfway across the country. So, good thing there. So overall, I think the Celestron SLT-130 is a fantastic beginning telescope for the amateur astronomer. If you're looking to buy a telescope for your family, um, it's a fantastic choice. Again, it's lightweight, it's pretty compact, it performs reasonably well. Um, it's nice to be able to just press in a number and the telescope goes to it for you. Um, I have links in the bottom and pictures that I've taken with these telescopes. Well, the, the one in front is the one that I've taken all the pictures with, but this, the other one will perform just as well. And uh, if there's any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Have a good one.